Hi, this is Phil, and I'm here to tell you all about the Capes and Lunatics Patreon. Don't miss out on our comic book creator interviews, including our monthly Chichester chats with comic book legend D.G. Chichester, superhero movie brackets in our search for the worst comic book movie of all time, and many, many more specials, all completely uncensored. Access starts for $3 a month, full video when you pledge $5 a month. Check out the link in our show notes or go to patreon.com slash capesandlunatics. Hope to see you there. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Yeah. Oh, you gotta get Luca to say, get some unlimited justice. You gotta do it. Okay, I will, definitely. <laughs> you want some I justice? Want some justice? <laughs> What's up, justice? Well, here's some unlimited justice, bub. <laughs> What's up, turtle justice, kid? <laughs> That's right, kids. Welcome back to another episode of Unlimited Justice, the Justice Society, the Justice League podcast. I am Phil. Only the cool kids like us, it's fine. Oh, that's right. You're not refined enough to like us. Anyway, I am Phil. Joining me, as always, that fancy woman herself, it is. I'm not Charlie yes, I'm just a lowly old Florida woman. Hey, y'all, it's a little hellfire. Get off my lawn, you damn Crocs. <laughs> the armadillo's got it. Uh, whoa. <laughs> Armadillos. They said the armadillos get it, got it. I was like, whoa, what? <laughs> All right, we are back again. We're in the middle of a crisis on Earth. A Prime. crisis that that never stops, that never ends, because it's DC Comics. I know. Oh, I was gonna say yes, because we're doing parts three and four today. Because, little, should we should we tease what's coming at the at the end of the month or no? Give it to them. Give it to them. Good. Whoa. <laughs> Not that. Uh, so what are we calling? We're starting only OnlyFans, boys! Whoa! whoa. <laughs> I'm kidding. I'm kidding. It's Thursday night. They know what's up. I'm to take my clothes off. Damn. I don't do Twinkies or toaster strudels, so. Uh, okay. Come, come, come. This podcast is rated teen plus. <laughs> Can we get a ride on your alligator back, bro? No, what were you saying? What's the surprise we have for the kids? You know, uh, episode, episode, what is that, episode 13, uh, that we might have to push back a day to, to make a, a certain date work. <laughs> what prima donna are we pampering to now, Philip? <laughs> the birthday of the greatest podcaster of all time. Ah, uh, yes, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute, it's not December. Oh! <laughs> Oh, that's true. Put it here. <laughs> you are the greatest. I mean, listen to all these drops. Oh, you don't want to know the things I've done. Come on, spit it out, Philly. Well, what are we calling it? Was it uh, Busty Justice or? Uh... <laughs> we got a we got a special special episode for you guys. You're just gonna have to tune in and see. You know what we like to do in April, and boy, is this one a doozy. Hey, old. <laughs> That's right, kids. I mean, it's so big, we're going to be moving stuff around. So instead of uh, your Sector 2814 on uh, Fridays, like you usually get it, you're going to get it on Thursday. And this show will be on Friday. Hell, getting so. it early. Getting it in early. Whoa. No, you're going to you're gonna have to wait in the anticipation for this show. <laughs> on tinter hooks. What? <laughs> on tinter hooks. Oh, my. Put it here. That's right, kids. So it's big. It's massive. And, you know, Ray didn't want to play, so... And oversized. <laughs> no, a giant size. It's a giant size man thing. Oh boy! That's what the kids are gonna be saying. <laughs> Got that? Right. I can't wait. You know, it's our classic April annual April thing we do, so it's gonna be fun. Except Ray was too busy, so <laughs> Ray's doing that with someone else. He's cheating on us. He's moved on. <laughs> oh wait a minute, he's not gonna hear this. Exactly. Oh, he can say whatever he wants. Yeah, he's not gonna hear this. He's not gonna hear this. He, you know what? I wonder. I wonder if Ray would like never listen to this show just because he's afraid that Batman's gonna be part of any story. <laughs> he can. He can skip the uh, the fourth episode every month. <laughs> That's pretty much a guarantee he's gonna show up there. But everywhere yeah. else, I mean, not really. I mean, not this story for no. Oh my God! Do you think? I don't know how commercials work in Australia, but do you think he's not going to watch TV this weekend just because the commercials are going to be every two seconds? Better stay off the internet, too, unless he's got oh, a Oh, true. But he's, he's only 
mean, he's you guys are literally mere weeks away from a Moon Knight true. TV show. Yep, that's true. So it evens itself out. That's all right. He's Jerry. What? <laughs> he breaks even. Oh yeah. <laughs> okay. Gotta get my Seinfeld reference in early. Hey, folks. Oh, uh, so you're saying he's, he's even Steven? Now just throw twenty dollars. Just mail twenty dollars in the envelope to me, Ray, and see if you get it. Back. Hey, <laughs> you know you could have threw a pencil out the window. <laughs> but anywho, yeah, I can't wait for our little annual April thing that we do. Hey, I think this one's going to be really good. And also, since we're doing that, yes, you'll get your uh, animated series episode uh, a week early. Also, surprises all around. <laughs> boy, boy, boy. <laughs> now keep it classy oh I, i'm sorry i'm sorry i forgot who i was working with here <laughs> speaking of putting in things you... places what whoa okay speaking of putting things places shall we you mean the multiverse okay <laughs> exactly all right kids like i said we're back here for crisis on earth prime parts three and four so part three we're back to justice league of america Number 208 from November 1982. The bomb blast heard around the world. Yep. <laughs> uh, writer, friend of the show. Uh, he didn't murder anyone. You can't tell me otherwise. Uh, Jerry Conway. This is Jerry Conway, and you're listening he, to He had a good he reason. He wasn't a monster is what we discovered. That's right. So, yeah, Jerry Conway, penciler Don Heck, inker. What the heck? <laughs> so. Okay, Cone. Uh, Inker Sal Trapani, uh, colorist Carl Gafford, letterer Bill Felix, and editor Len Wein. Len Wein, oh boy! <laughs> oh, did you? And then this one had that uh, this the uh, special uh, bonus story, uh, the Masters of the Universe story. Yes. Oh, you know what's you know what's cool? I read this on DC Universe. They they included that in the uh, on the DC Universe. Uh, you oh, know. did they? Oh, yeah. Sweet. I know. I was like, oh, I was surprised. I was like, well, cool. I just, like, with Comixology down, I just, now I definitely need Disney to buy Warners just so I can just don't have to buy, like, three apps. <laughs> I don't want DC Finite. I don't want Marvel Limited. <laughs> I don't want them. I was happy with my comics, my one app to rule them all. Damn it, Amazon. Longest relationship I've ever been, and they're just disappointing me all around. Oh, what else is new? Hollow of Hellfire? Uh, He's not getting it. Let me tell you, Jeffrey Bezos is getting no Egg McMuffin. Oh! It's all rape and murder, I'll tell you He's going to go home hungry. <laughs> Somebody's muffin's getting buttered. That ain't my business. <laughs> Anywho, let's just jump into this story, because it is hilarious. I love this cover. I love the old Justice League covers with the little heads and stuff. It's so cute and retro. Oh, yeah, and just the atomic bomb blast. Yeah, in the in the laughing face. Take it on. <laughs> the original laughing emoji. Oh my god. <laughs> LOL, kaboom. Suck it, Gen Z. <laughs> oh my. But I love I love I love the heads like around like the uh picture, like a picture frame. Uh look know. at Aquaman scowling and Superman screaming. <laughs> Reminds me of the corner boxes, but yeah, yeah, I love the head the floating head, you know. In case, in case you kids don't know who's in this issue, you know who Maybe the Justice League, but it's like when you get to actually get to the All Star Squadron side, who's like at this Liberty point, Bell at this point in time. Oh boy, Commander Steel! I have to buy this issue. Robot man, oh boy! <laughs> Not even the Doom Patrol. I know. I know. The good Johnny Quick. Oh right. Ah, it's debatable. Hey oh. All right. Oh, poor Alan Scott down in the bottom. Hey oh. Hey oh. <laughs> Don't. <laughs> ah, all right here we go kids on earth 2 in january 1942 at the jsa's meeting room five all-stars commander steel firebrand 2 johnny quick liberty bell and robot man are rudely surprised to find five unknown interlopers in their borrowed headquarters and for three pages they fight <laughs> <laughs> If for three pages they're like hey who are you i don't know they want business for three pages hey who are you I, who, <laughs> no who are you <laughs> these would be the justice league aquaman firestorm hawkman superman and satana visiting from a future decade of a parallel world what oh hey what's going on 
<laughs> oh no i was gonna say wait a minute it's the 80s each team only had one female but no the all-star squadron had two <gasps> yeah but we never saw her again so what are you gonna do That's true. <laughs> not liberty bell the other one the redhead you know how Fire, the redheads get fire firebrand yes yeah. Crisis, crisis, crisis. Firestorm was like, eyebrows, eyebrows, eyebrows. This is like, get lost, loser. <laughs> you like fire? So do I. <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, visiting from a future decade of a parallel world. An unnecessary and regrettable fracas ensues until Superman, quickly joined by Robot Man, starts talking some sense to the assembled mystery persons. Uh, then the telephone rings. <laughs> President Roosevelt, as they all hate the other President Roosevelt, <laughs> as they all not ha- the good one, the bad. <laughs> as they all hasten to Washington D.C., and all ten of them soon are ushered into the White House by Harry Hopkins. FDR by Harry Hopkins. FDR has a mystery with which he would l- like their help. A crazy Scooby Dooby Doo, where are you? Bro, bro. <laughs> I got so much to do now. Hey kids, I don't want to. I don't want to say Lilf is high, but her dogs talk to her all the time. Smoke to doobie. Uh, don't be hating. A crated piece of electronic equipment was delivered to the White House that morning, and they they had unpacked it and set it up. And a note in the crate told them to use these electronic gizmos. A 1982 tech projection screen TV. <laughs> that boy was heavy. <laughs> Future, I know it's like oh that future tech, and it's this TV was still the size of a house, you know. <laughs> oh, oh my man, God. I saw one of those like the first like you know um, flat screens, but it still had that big wide back. Uh huh. Uh-huh. <laughs> I was like, people were paying thousands for these, man. <laughs> oh please, when the first VCRs came out, I mean, were they paying like thousand bucks for them? <gasps> yes. Oh my god. <laughs> and then the poor suckers that got sucked into Betamax. Never choose Sony proprietary things. Never. So everyone except the Justice League standing in this room going, look, the screen, it's color. Could you imagine? I don't know, unless, unless you, well, you probably are. You probably like had your grandma, grandma's basement TV was probably black and white. <laughs> When I was little, like, my parents gave me, I, I had, like, a small black and white TV for up in my room. Like, rabbit ears and stuff, you know. So, I knew a little bit of black and white, but yeah, yeah that's weird. <laughs> I was just like, man, I'm going downstairs and watch color. Watch, watch my morning Transformers before I went to school. Oh, those were the days. Now yeah. kids can just watch it on their phone. They don't have to struggle for nothing. Nope, nope, nope. nope. And if you missed the cartoons on Saturday, you didn't. You missed them for a week. Not even a week. You had to wait till the summer for a rerun. True, true, true. <laughs> but I'm just saying, for any episode at all of that show, yeah, you had to wait yeah. for a week. Yeah, Spider Man and his amazing friends, followed by the Hulk cartoon. Eesh. Glad I'm an '86 baby. <laughs> I don't remember those hard times. <laughs> oh my God, Lilith! When when the Hulk changed back in the banner, his shirt magically reappeared. Got to cover them them green nips. <laughs> Same reason why he wears purple shorts. <laughs> uh, that's an interesting artistic choice. That's an interesting artistic choice. <laughs> All right, uh, to receive a special broadcast at that particular time of day. On schedule, there's Perdegaton, who claims to be simultaneously addressing FDR, Churchill, De Gaulle, Hitler, Mussolini, Stalin, Hirohito, and Chiang kai sek uh, with built-in instant translation and worldwide satellite coverage. Who is he, the NFL? Who is he, the NFL? <laughs> the uh, original CNN, buddy. Uh, oh, my. Also, Or if you like the BBC. You know, no judgments. <laughs> also, Degaton can hear and see the all-stars and therefore all of these, world wo- these world war leaders. Also, Degaton has got nuke-tipped ICBMs and has demonstrations scheduled for tomorrow at dawn of what these things can do. Uh, I shall shoot my phallic weaponry at you. Isn't it timely? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Damn it! Everything... Uh, I'm telling you, we're right back to where we started. <laughs> Everything keeps coming back around. Oh my god, did you see, like, there... I On Twitter, I saw pictures of, like, Putin. He sits, like, all the way on the other side of, you know, like like that scene from uh, Michael Keaton and uh, Kim Basinger and Batman where they're sitting all the way across the room and like, 
that big table. That's what Putin's doing with his people. He's afraid of getting assassinated, and he's afraid of COVID. Because he's a germaphobe. One won't. is more likely than the other, but we won't say which one, Adam. <laughs> Maybe that's all we'll take him out. Who knows? <laughs> Meanwhile, on Earth Prime in October 1982, in the r- horrible ruins of New York City. Well, that could be 2021. New York City! That could be 2022. <laughs> Uh, the Justice Society, Dr. Fate, Green Lantern, the Huntress, Power Girl, and Star Man enter a subway tunnel and encounter some very hostile mutated humanoids reduced to primitive squalor and spoiling Clayface, perfect. is that you? I mean, I, I thought it was cool because I was like, man, I didn't think they got this dark like back then, but, you know. Oh, yeah. Nobody, ba- nobody bats an eyelash. <laughs> exactly. Oh, my lord. Uh... They get one, and Dr. Fate ends it by activating the old lights in this tunnel, which shocks their darkness-adapted eyes and knocks them out. Green Lantern's ring, which has led them to this tunnel and now leads them further down it, soon bring the team to the home of an old, blind, unnamed human hermit. Cause... This is his chance to shine. There should be no wood down there. hey <laughs> Well, yeah, you figure, you know, they, the nuke probably killed every tree and... Who has lived there? He's at- like, I'm not going back. He's like Doctor Strange looking for the best time. <laughs> uh, who has lived there eccentrically surrounded by old style and useless television sets ever since the bombs fell. Doctor Fate absorbs the old man's memories and projects them into one of the junk TV sets. He's, Man- he's sticking his cow where it don't belong. <laughs> Red flag. <laughs> Man, there's a theme of this uh, issue. It's TV. Uh... <laughs> It was still fresh and exciting in the 80s. Oh, true. <laughs> give, me, give me my MTV. Oh, is this before MTV? Oh, my God. Oh, no. It's right at the beginnings of MTV 82. Oh, it was still man. kind of a local New York thing at that time, I think, if I remember right. Hmm. And then in 83 is when they launched. And then they stopped playing music in like 2003. So, you know. 82. Oh, my God. This is before Transformers. I don't know if I... What was I watching? Probably whatever my parents had on. <laughs> no, I was like four. So, I probably was watching whatever what my parents were watching. Probably, probably stuck on a Friday night as my mo- mother had to watch Miami Vice. Oh, well, Don Johnson, lover in the family. I guess I don't know, man. But every Friday night it was Miami Vice. Uh, oh no, I lost my place. Oh no! <laughs> oh boy! Uh, no, here we go. Uh, me fates. Okay, back in October 1962, President Kennedy era was, was broadcast. Cuban Missile Crisis. Right, yeah. uh, somebody's a his Jerry Conway is a history nerd. Pass it on. Uh, he, but, uh, <laughs> you, you know what it is. He probably does his homework like some people. I got the good. I think he's a history guys. nerd. Well, I think yeah. that's what this is all about. <laughs> he's saying he uh, was uh, showing his history. He was whipping out his history. Uh... He's a history buff. <laughs> the, whoa. <laughs> Back in the yeah, President Kennedy was broadcasting to the nation a description of the Cuban Missile Crisis which now had a more sinister twist added to it. The Soviet... Wait a minute, he probably lived through this. What am I talking about? (laughs) True. Durr. This is 82. Yeah, exactly. And he was yeah, he was pretty young still, so (laughs) it was all fresh. Probably when he was a kid. Uh, Cuban-based ICBMs had been stolen by super-powered parties unknown. Chairman Khrushchev and President Kennedy pointedly disbelieved each other's versions of what had happened and a civilization-destroying exchange of nukes had ensued, killing about one-third of the world's three billion people and reducing the rest to deformity and savagery. Uh, so another Friday night, gotcha. For the last two years, gotcha. Exactly. On Earth Prime, October 1982, Green Lantern and Dr. Fate compare notes. And something else. And each in each in his own way has been alerted. Was there some measuring form of measuring contest going on? Is that what you're implying, Philip? <laughs> My case is longer than yours. We're measuring in centimeters. <laughs> uh Green Lantern and Dr. Fate compare notes. Each in his own way has been alerted to a persona echo of a man involved in this catastrophe. Per Degaton. <laughs> Like, with a name like Perdegaton, you're bound to be a drama queen, okay? Oh, yeah, especially if it rhymes with Megatron, yeah. Ooh, wolf. Somebody get Larry Hamill on the phone. Oh, my God, we need to talk to him. Oh, my God. 
Uh, on Earth 2, January 1942, at sea aboard a Royal Navy warship, nine all stars. And- Seamen! Arg! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> well, yeah, I fr- I'm sorry. I don't keep it as classy as you, Will. <laughs> I mean, it was right there. <laughs> hey, oh! Seamen! Thank you! <laughs> oh, my. You hit him right in the face with that sack. Uh. Nine All-Stars and Justice Leaguers stand by to observe Perdegaton's demonstration while Aquaman zooms through the area warning all sea life to flee. Suck it, first class! <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> uh. Uh, screw that movie. <laughs> Whoa! I need that as a drop, please. <laughs> no problem! <laughs> Uh, so yes, Aquaman's warning all the sea life. Good and wet! Psst, Aquaman bleeps fish, pass it on. F you, Barry. <laughs> uh, on schedule, an ICBM dives into the area from its parabolic orbit and detonates. Satana shields the assembled... I still say they should have had Grant Gustin instead. <laughs> that would have really messed with everybody. Tell, hey, maybe by the end of that movie. Maybe that's why they're ending the Flash series. <laughs> After season nine, man. Uh, so yes, the Tana shields them, uh, surface vessels from the shockwave and other destructive effects. Then appearing out of the center of the blast zone, a transparent flying bubble appears, carrying five unconscious JSA members. They re- oh, would you look at these slackers? <laughs> they re- I know, sleeping on the job. They regroup on the flagship's deck, all 15 of them, and get to work on making a plan. Oh, thank God, everyone, you know, each team sent in a pr- a pr- a, the same amount of members. And hey, we already have a speedster in Johnny Quick, so no need to send any of your flashes. <laughs> Good thing we don't have a uh, overlap of powers here, kids. Firebrand would like to have a word with you. Oh yeah, and fire. Well, Firestorm can transmutate stuff. Shut up. Well, technically, so can Firestorm. Well, no, I don't. Think the Firebrand can't transmute stuff. She just uses fire, right? Firestorm can actually change stuff. Firebrand is whatever we need her to be. And that's why we love her, and we never saw her again. <laughs> crisis, crisis, crisis. Well, she definitely got the Marsha, the Jan treatment. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, the JSA members, they regroup on the flagship's deck, all 15 of them, and get to work on making a plan. Sounds like a plan, Jan. <laughs> uh, uh, that's what I'm, I told you, man. He's Sounds like a plan, Jan. About to have his own you know, I'm going to have to break you two up. <laughs> why? Enough's enough. Why? You and your little sausage fest are getting out of hand. <laughs> A2 Lilith Hellfire. And now you got David on it? Great job. <laughs> A2 Lilith Hellfire? Exactly. Go ahead, throw it in. Oh my god, did you hear? I don't, for some reason, The Last Sons of Krypton and Rebecca did an episode on uh, the Spider Man movies. Spider Man. Last Sons of Krypton. We did it first, so whatever. Spider Man. <laughs> I know. But Last Sons of Krypton. He's red and blue and starts with an S. It's confusing, even for the most nerdiest of nerds, apparently. <laughs> so, like, oh, so yeah, so Connor must be a Spider Man fan, too. So I'm thinking, oh my God, I wonder if the next Sausage Fest, if I could get Ray, Dave, and jo- and uh, Connor. Ooh. Extra meaty. Whoa! <laughs> I need that as a drop, please. Oh, snap! Don't forget to get your Bat Calzones when you go to see the Batman movie, guys. I want to get that. I know. Cause that's what Conan was asking me. He's like, you tried that yet? I'm like, no. Yeah, that's what we're doing before the movie, so. Oh. that Boy, that date's... Uh, okay. <laughs> Sometimes that can be a cheap date. Other times, not so much. <laughs> oh, my God. That, that... The movie's going to be like 80 bucks, so... <laughs> Well, thank you so much. All right, kids. You're, that date is. You take- heard it here first. Okay, kids. That date is taking her to the Batman and then filling her with pepperoni. Hey, oh. Philip. What you're going? This to podcast get- is rated teen you're going because to get- of Philip's crude humor. You're going to get. Pe- you're going to get pizza. What did you think I meant, you dirty pervert? Exactly. There's alcohol, so I'll be fine. Oh, they my. said the alcohol in your seat at the movie theater. I'll be fine. That's, uh, that's true, kid. She'll be drunk. That doubles her strength. Exactly. It doubles her strength and resistance. All right. Well, what do you think of this first one? Uh, it's kind of weird. No. <laughs> to be honest. I like the history references. That's that's about the coolest thing. It's just like, get to it already. I know. I mean, I didn't think we got, I, I didn't think we got anything. Kid predict. 
Lance Hat's ass, man! I mean, I guess this is Conway, but I don't think we ever got anything this intricate back then. It's like, okay, we have to keep track of what Earth and what time. What time? And I what know. year on which Earth we're in. my head hurt. It makes me feel like I'm watching an early season of a Flash show. No, no, no. You, oh, you Flash. Stop. I Flash him here. To- <laughs> I feel like I'm in the house all over again. <laughs> That's a compliment, though, because that was like the best thing about the early seasons. <laughs> like, we're going back to the house that night. Oh. <sighs> Run, Barry, run. That's the thing we're missing. No Barry Allen, no Jay Garrick in the story. No Jay Garrick. Yes. No Batman. Good. Oh, I'll Good. dare you. No Wonder Woman, though, so, you know. I know, I know, that's weird. It's like, no no Wonder Woman, no Batman, no Flash. Uh, well, We got Aquaman, that's good. <laughs> Remember back in the day when no. Aquaman was just good enough? <laughs> Good enough. We we need so many uh, founding members. Oh, our cool man's here. Good. Uh, that 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 checks the box. Moving on. <laughs> well, if some of the kids love the Batman. Okay, Batman, my favorite. My character. favorite character. <laughs> Why? <laughs> oh, good God! All right. Crikey, he done gone and lost his mind. <laughs> oh, oh, you know why he loves the Batman? Oh my God! He, he, one of his weapons is a boomerang. Batman. My favorite character. Wow. Wow, Phil. How racist can you be? <laughs> Might as well just call him a koala blooper. Wow! <laughs> Batman or Ray? Either or. Oh. A couple of bulls down the gold. Ray's not gonna hear this. True. Come on. <laughs> Unless someone reports to him, but I don't know. Oh, Snitches get stitches and end up in ditches. I'm from Florida. Mark my words. <laughs> That's all right, man. The kids, the kids love. The kids love. <laughs> you know what? The boomerang comment he won't care about. It's just that the Batman stuff he'll care. <laughs> Poor Ray Ray. I know. All right, so we get- I did read the backup. I don't want to talk about it, but I thought that it was really interesting. What the He Man? Yeah. The so Superman on Eternia. Yeah. <laughs> Well, Conan, with a better written story. I love... <laughs> yes, because uh, he super it's Superman's second time on Eternia. He just can't stay away. I love Skeletor's like, ha-ha, you're, 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 you're weak, your weakness is magic, ha-ha. Exactly. He's like, now put on this He-Man costume. I heard you were a bottom. <laughs> okay, salty skele- Skeletor. Jeez. Uh... Oh my god, you just broke my concentration. <laughs> Next story! <laughs> it's so salty. <laughs> Phil, do you want to borrow some of my ADHD medicine? <laughs> yes, please. Oh, please. You know what she's going to send me, kids? This is going to be a box a box of, uh, you know, it's going to be a bottle of rum and a uh, big blunt. <laughs> some medical marijuana. <laughs> her, her ADHD medicine, yeah. Yeah, Vivian's is kind of garbage. I wouldn't force that on anybody. <laughs> Not gonna lie. <laughs> All right. So, part four, All Star Squadron number fifteen from November nineteen eighty two. Still not born. It's fine. Master of Worlds and Time. Yeah. I wouldn't go that far, but okay. <laughs> Master of Worlds and Time. We're doing me now. Writer Roy Thomas, penciler Adrian Gonzalez, inker Jerry Ordway, colors. Ooh, the other Jerry. Jerry. Uh, colorist. Car- Hello, Jerry. <laughs> colorist Carl Gafford, letterer John Costanza. Costanza. <laughs> we have a Jerry and a Costanza in this uh, creative team. And editor Len Wein, keeping it all together. And another Masters of the Universe backup story. Uh, and then only to lose it, lose it to Marvel. What a shame. Then they've all lost. And then they got it back. Yep. And it was really good. Mm-hmm. Two times they got it back and it was really good. So. Then Kevin Smith had to get his dirty hands on it. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> all right, kids. That was at night with PDP. Oh, like you praised that thing. Come on. I know. It's just finally it's not me. <laughs> I didn't even watch it. I don't know. On Earth 2 in January 1942... Perdegaton sailed the ocean blue. No, uh, Perdegaton's control room. He gets the news that the Justice Society has come after him from 40 years in the future. 
oh man, you know someone's going to mad on for you if they come back in time 40 years to come get you. <laughs> it's okay. Nobody's black. Oh! Oh! Burn. <laughs> It doesn't... Yeah, black people don't want to time travel backwards. That's all I'm saying. <laughs> well, hell, I, I'm sure people in our future don't want to travel back in time. Anybody? <laughs> it's like, yeah, stay away from that year, tw- like 2019 through like 2025. Just don't go there. <laughs> 2020 to 2030. Yeah, don't do it, bro. Oh, damn. He said the whole decade. <laughs> Just to be safe. Yeah. Nah, 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 nah. We've, we've thrown a bubble over that whole 10 years. <laughs> hey, don't we get Power Girl in this issue? Boy, 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 boy. <laughs> no, I mean she's way more toned down, but I oh, like yeah. this Power Girl. Yeah, she's a little ditzy, but you know she's a woman character being written in the eighties. Wasn't that the and jo- she's a blonde? Wasn't that the joke? It's like after Crisis, you know, the multiverse was gone. Unless you're like, oh no, the multiverse was just hidden in her like bra or something. <laughs> See, that's when they seemed to get bigger, wasn't it? <laughs> no, it's like a joke. It's, it wasn't it like or was it pre Christ? I don't know. Like one of was it. One of these original creators, somebody was like, "Oh yeah, the joke was like they make them bigger every issue." Didn't, didn't, and then, oh see- yeah, that was way, way after Crisis, though. Yeah, yeah, but they were just like, <laughs> yeah, until somebody finally said, "Hey, hey, enough!" And then he had to be—he was stuck with how big they were. <laughs> Which you know, eventually one day we'll get around to on boob windows and long boxes. See, is that's the inspiration for <laughs> boob windows and long boxes? <laughs> exactly. Just gotta get this damn worst superhero movie out of the way. <laughs> And then we're well. Then we're next year. We're doing best superhero movie, which Kristen is running, so it'll be much more smooth. <laughs> hey man, you guys talking me into the movie stuff? Come on. I know it was like a joke, and then we're like, no, we're gonna do it for real. <laughs> I know. Uh, well, just like no, 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 no. You're not getting out of that. <laughs> All the times you make me suffer. Oh what? Oh you know, you know it sent me over the edge last summer. <laughs> Wait what? That annual crossover. Oh. That's what this is payback for, Philip. I was going to say, I was going to say, which one? Atlantis Attacks? Um, Armageddon? Uh, Armageddon, you know it. That wasn't the summer. <laughs> it felt like it. It felt like eternity. Oh, pl- oh, oh, that's right. A couple of comic capers in a row. Made you do Captain America, too. I'm sorry. Yeah. So, you know. She's like, she's like, shut up and suck it up. You can <laughs> do a couple of movies. Uh, so, yeah. So, pe- oh, we got two ladies. That's right. Huntress is in this one, too. That's right. Oh, for only 60 cents. Could you imagine? Seriously. Like, I see someone like that went um back issue shopping and I saw some for a quarter and I was paying a dollar for it. And I was just like, son of a bitch. I'm going to make a time machine, damn it. Although sometimes it's gonna push me over the edge. Well, it evens out because sometimes the minute those books go to five ninety nine a piece, I'm creating a time travel machine. <laughs> It'll be cheaper. <laughs> <laughs> in the end. <laughs> oh my! Well, it evens out because sometimes in a dollar box you can find stuff that's like ha- oh, have yeah. a cover price I, of one twenty five or one fifty. I robbed that, that dollar bin. You won't. You wouldn't even believe some of the stuff that he puts in that dollar bin. In. <laughs> she made that box her bitch. Hell. <laughs> <laughs> me wow <laughs> somebody's muffins getting buttered that ain't my business i think it's the members of the all-star squadron but you ain't heard Ew. that <laughs> All right. god they're just like so useless in this issue a lot of redundancy going on <laughs> i was gonna say okay okay let's get back to the story all these white people came back in time uh <laughs> it doesn't phase him at all on a huge video monitor degaton and at least five hench troopers are observing a u.s battleship steam steaming in the north atlantic via aerial tv camera on the main on the main deck yes little deck, the are... poop deck! <laughs> oh, oh yeah you tell me i'm immature jeez we expect better from you philip everybody knows me art <laughs> just listen to my just listen to my drops people make fun of me for <laughs> oh they love your drops pirates art <laughs> I mean, come on, we had a whole contest. People love you so much, you know. Oh, now tap, now tap, who can say they won the contest? <laughs> what? Now, who who was it that won the contest again? He can say he won a contest. Got, oh, <laughs> Justin. he didn't cheat. Tap, tap, tap in my way downtown. <laughs> Superior puss. Now that's the one that I want to catch on. I just want to be walking down the road one day and I just want to hear, well, maybe not in Florida. Oh my God. But- <laughs> 
Maybe not in Florida. As if I didn't want this enough before, now I must make our our team famous, world famous, just so you you cannot escape it. So anywhere in the world, you can just be walking down the street and just hear superior puss. <laughs> it's That's so the salty. Dream. <laughs> That's the dream. I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. Mm. Aren't we all? Hey, well, <laughs> and speaking of meat. a guy with a cosmic rod, we do have Starman. Oh, true. Talking about <laughs> meat is so natural for Lilith. All right. Get ready, kids. Watch me work some magic. All right. On the main deck are 15 colorful figures from three super teams. Aquaman, Commander Steel, uh, Aquaman, Commander Steel, Dr. Fate, Firebrand, Firestorm, Green Lantern, Hawkman, The Huntress, Johnny Quick, Liberty Bell, Power Girl, Robot Man, Starman, Superman, and Zatanna. <laughs> Can't believe he put Zantana last a hole. Did they do it? Well, did they do it in uh, alphabetical order? Because they started yeah, with Aquaman, awesome, yeah. <laughs> uh, but she speaks backwards, so she should have went first. Hey, <laughs> don't you just hate? Don't you, uh, don't you just hate that when the woman comes last, so far? Come, come, come! I sure do. <laughs> hey, it's rude. It's a brave man who does. A brave man who doesn't let the woman go first at knife point. Hello, huh, Hellfire. <laughs> Either do the six or do the nine. We're going to do both. <laughs> hey uh, Come on! Get your head out of your butt, buddy! Okay, I'm going. All right. Uh, Degaton sensors reveal that five of them are from a future decade of a parallel world, which still doesn't bother him. But he's able to eavesdrop on because they're white. And he will eavesdrop on them, and he doesn't want... Wait, and the heroes don't seem to know that they're being observed. So Degaton's mad overconfidence may not be completely unwarranted. Degaton's demonstrator nuke had radioactively contaminated the area until Dr. Fate and Zatanna had magically cleaned it up. Ro- oh, really? Magic. <laughs> you, uh, uh, well, you know how you do magic, right, Little Hellfire? Jazz hands. <laughs> the big finish? <laughs> <laughs> Always. Uh... Uh, I'm going to the hole on principle. That's what poor Degaton tried to do. He got denied! Rejected! The big finish. The big humiliated. Jazz hands. Jazz hands and you have to talk backwards. That's a mouthful. (laughs) Robot Man and Commander Steel are curious about how this time travel business is working out. So Firestorm and Dr. Fate and Green Lantern, all from 1982... Recap the adventures and travels that have brought them to this particular time and place. And once the they Bendis ha- treatment. Oh, <laughs> but better executed with the dialogue. You're from the future. Yes, I'm from the future. Yes, I'm from Earth One. I'm from Earth Two. How do you know if you're from Earth One? We, see, from our point of view, we're from Earth One. Oh, okay, but we call you Earth Two. Okay, <sighs> and that will be a whole Bendis issue. Listen, your your knockoff guy's called Ultraman. Our guy is Superman. Clearly, we're the first Earth. <laughs> Clearly. <laughs> no, Earth 2 and Earth 1, Superman and Superman. <laughs> it's like, why wouldn't the older guys be Earth 1? <laughs> Don't think too hard about it. They didn't. <laughs> <laughs> They're just like, yeah, we're going to kill it. We're going we're gonna to break it all in crisis anyway. And once they have their story straight, they return to the White House and report it to President Roosevelt. Degaton has been eavesdropping this whole time and now knows everything they know. Degaton now transmits a new warning to e- warning. To FDR, anti Churchill, and Hitler, what? and Stalin, and Toto, and a five hour deadline and an ultimatum for all of them. He's now the dictator of the world or else. Yeah, see? One trillion dollars. One billion dollars. <laughs> uh, like Jeff Bezos, can you spot? <laughs> How about new? Uh, he's. Uh... Uh, he's now the dictator of the world or else. Roosevelt, who had just days earlier defied Anton Haster's takeover demands, now decides that the risk of mass civilian fatalities is too high. The justice teams have got five hours, but after that, he's determined to resign. They form five sub-teams and get to work. Now get to work! Cha-cha real smooth now. <laughs> Dr. Fate, Robot Man, and Superman fly into Earth orbit intercept Degaton's space satellite, and start ripping it apart. When they encounter a kryptonite booby trap, which takes out Superman almost instantly, and then are attacked Did by- Did you just laugh at the word booby mid-sentence? <laughs> they said trap. 
That's about right. Hey, well, what do you call? What do you call a, a bra? A booby trap? That's funny right Get there. Out. That's funny right there. <laughs> uh, they uh, they're attacked by Ultraman. Dr. Fate magically counterattacks. Ultraman shrugs it off and punches Fate out. Then... <laughs> It sounds like something emo. Punches fade out. <laughs> <laughs> then partially disassembles Robot Man and flings him toward Earth. Doc- Damn! <laughs> Dr. Fate rallies and reattacks. Then Superman does so also, and Ultraman is soon punched into outer space, and Robot Man is quickly rescued and reassembled. Ah, I love pre-crisis, yeah. H- half the issues end, yeah, and then we punched him into space. <laughs> That's where Invincible got that reference from. <laughs> True. All right. Meanwhile, Aquaman, Liberty Bell, and Starman fly across the Pacific towards a spot a few hundred miles south of Japan, where Starman's cosmic rod. Shut hey up. Shut up, Lilith. <laughs> That's an awfully big rod he's got there. <laughs> Looking to party. I'm a sucker early, for a guy a with. A, I'm a sucker for a guy with a powerful rod. Hey Where Starman's cosmic rod has detected radioactivity. Aquaman dives into the ocean while the other two land on a small island. They find a Japanese military post with all the troops unconscious. Then the radiation trail leads them down a cave to an underground missile base manned by at least six Degaton troopers plus Superwoman. Uh Uh-oh, not Superwoman. The troopers are quickly dispensed with, but Superwoman knocks Starman unconscious. Lariat snapped to the back of the head. Oh! <laughs> Donkey punch me now, bitch! <laughs> <laughs> oh my. Yeah, she don't. Try to donkey punch me now, bitch! <laughs> I swear, our drops are so freaking. Our <laughs> drops, little hellfire? Our drops? Fine, my drops, fine. Put it here! Uh. Uh, and punches Bell. You're the gym shooter of this whole thing, so I'm just saying. <laughs> Power of the penis. And punches Bell almost unconscious. She runs her mouth enough for Bell to figure out the amount of distrust existing between Perdegaton and the crime scene. Oh, mouthy female. Oh. Exactly. That's her superpower. <laughs> oh, 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 my. Uh. Suck it, Russell. <laughs> He's like, I didn't even do anything. Uh. Yeah, the, the amount of distrust between Pregnant and Diganton and the Crime Syndicate, which is considerable, then grab- Oh my god. Shut up, Lil. Then grabs Starman's cosmic rod and gets ready to kill the two heroes. <laughs> Somebody's muffin's getting buttered, but that ain't my business. <laughs> Somebody's muffin's getting buttered, but that ain't my business. Uh, uh, oh wait, I got one more. We have like three rod drops, though. <laughs> of course we do. I was gonna say, Charlie has one, too. Uh, the Charlie- uh, the cosmic Dear- rod- the cosmic rod- <laughs> Dear Manscaped. <laughs> Dear Manscaped, we have men, women, everyone talking about the rod. Come on. <sighs> and of course. It's a giant size <gasps> man thing. Oh, you think- you think Superman has to shave his pubes how he shaves his beard? Oh! <laughs> Damn you! Damn you, Burn! <laughs> oh, mate. Either that or kryptonite. I don't know. Burn. You definitely don't want kryptonite near your private spot. Ah, oh, true, man. <laughs> don't it, want to rot off. <laughs> think it's bad if you think it's bad if you nick the boys with a razor. Oh my god. <sighs> yeah, just get some radioactivity in there. Oh jeez. Or do you Burn. think he just like has a little lead shower? <laughs> or maybe he learned from this issue and just like you know, you know, drop from drop in the orbit from space, buck naked, man. <laughs> <laughs> Damn. Burn. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Back to the story at hand. Sorry, kids. Lilith was thinking about Superman's junk. As you do. As you do. Whoa. Well, As a Superman fan, if you don't think about Superman's junk at least once a year, are you really a super fan? I don't think so. Oh, she's calling you out, Ray and Connor. Oh. <laughs> Tyler can get it, too. <laughs> <laughs> but I don't want no smoke with James Cole. No, sir. No, oh, sir. Oh, no, man. <laughs> Chuck Norris quivers at the thought of just for James Cole. Exactly. All right. So, uh, yes. Lil, all right. Lilith has said her piece about the Man of Steel. Uh, yeah, she grabs the Cosmic Garage to try to kill them, except that just then Aquaman and some blue whales smash their way into the undersea <laughs> base, bringing a big bunch of the Pacific Ocean. <laughs> Classic Aquaman. 
bringing his bleep buddy along. Whoa, whoa. Smash it. I mean. What? Jen's gum confirmed. It's true. I mean, talk about the donkey punch hitting her with the ocean. Try to donkey yeah. punch now, bitch. Uh, I don't think she smells like the beach. Oh! <laughs> uh, fleas. How did I get fleas? I know the chunky who left these chunkies. Do it! <laughs> That's the worst for the ADHD is the sign phone, okay? <laughs> I know. Uh... I thought, that, I thought the sign was there because you don't want your parents walking when you had a girl in there. <laughs> Damn it, Kramer. <laughs> Make an outdoor and Schindler's list. Oh, yeah, sure. <laughs> Seconds later, as the base is rocked with explosions, Starman flies his two colleagues plus trussed up Superwoman safely out of range. The whales yeah, also escape. Mm-hmm. <laughs> the six or more troops manning the lawn station and the unconscious Japanese garrison above ground, not so much. Die. They don't have to save him. <laughs> I don't have to kill you. No, I'm safe. All right, and Hawkman, Huntress, and Johnny Quick, equipped with a hastily rebuilt Geiger counter, are crisscrossing the central USA in search of high levels of radiation, and eventually find some concealed in grain silos somewhere in the Midwest. Before they can do anything, it's Ohio. Else- they don't have to hide it. We all know it's Ohio. Oh my! <laughs> uh, before they can do anything about it, they are attacked by that man who, uh, with the most imaginative code code name power ring who by the way has already treacherously mowed down all of the Pedegaton henchmen who had been guarding and operating this song. <laughs> are we sure this is an opposite version of how jordan i think it might be but shh, don't tell anybody <laughs> i of course love how jordan don't want to break will's heart i know uh he easily ensnares quick and hawk and some green coils of ring energy hey but the huntress knocks him out with a batarang Still, before he falls down... Wait a minute. Wait a minute. What? Shouldn't it be a, be a huntress ring? It's <laughs> your dad's old stuff. Come on. Uh, still, before he falls down, he manages accidentally or not to launch one of the ICBMs. Before it can reach full speed, Johnny Quick launches himself onto it from Hawk to hail from Hawkman and very rapidly disassembles the missile, managing also not to detonate it in the process. Thank goodness. How convenient. One safe landing later, Quick spends the next few minutes dismantling the remaining unlaunched missiles. Okay, okay, boys, how do you get a woman if you if uh, even just to, to the, your code name is Johnny Quick? I mean, some people don't want to be all day. You know, they got to get up and go to work. I get it. No, but I'm sure you want more than thirty seconds, little Hellfire. I mean, no kink shaming. <laughs> Have you ever faked it? Yeah, when it's been enough, and I just want to get some sleep. <laughs> There's a lift for every pot filling. Hey <laughs> And if anyone knows about pot, it's Lil Hellfire. <laughs> that works on so many levels. Uh, <laughs> Degaton has been observing these encounters and is having a fit about it. <laughs> but he's still got a final ace up his sleeve, and if anybody's in this uh, if anybody's insane enough to use it, he'd be the guy. Oh god. So before today's over, either he will have conquered or uh, Earth, or there will be no Earths anywhere. It's my way or the highway. <laughs> Where well, I want Ukraine? What? Ooh. <laughs> Ooh. I didn't, what you say, little Alright. Oh wait a minute. Hold Nothing. On. Well, hold on. Don't be making fun of Laddy Daddy. <laughs> what? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Uh, all right. So, what do you think of book four, love? Now that's what I'm talking about. Lots of action, lots of moving parts. Oh yeah, the I- girls are on on center display. I like that. Hell, <laughs> boosted many many a boy into manhood. <laughs> but no, I thought I thought it was pretty good. I mean, any of these issues. I mean, in modern times, could be like th- like three to six issues. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm glad, you know, I'm glad that wasn't a thing. I really do want to get back to basics, especially at DC, like... Yeah. I'm ready. And After if, we were back frickin' the Justice League, we need to get back to basics. Yeah, not everything has to be 6 to 12, kids, and if you're worried about the trades, I mean, if you have short... Screw the trades! Well, no, if you have short enough arcs, you know, you can throw, like, two arcs in one trade, you know? No, no, we need to ban trades for at least two years. I mean, do they make a lot of money there in trades? I 
literally don't think so. I mean, they don't make trades how they used to. Like, I have, like, three shelves full of them, obviously, and probably more than that. Yeah. But, like, none of them are recent unless it's, like, The Walking Dead or Invincible or something like that. Like, none of the recent stuff is DC stuff. I think my most recent DC stuff is probably, like, the Smallville stuff, if I'm being really honest. Yeah. Which was, like, ten years ago. Well, I have all, like, the regular issues of stuff. I mean, you're right. I mean, it's, like... I can't remember. I usually don't get trades anymore because it's like you walk in Barnes and Noble. It's like it's all the new stuff, and it's like any of the new stuff. It's like I've either bought it. I already in, have the con. I already have the singles. Yeah, issues. I've either I've either bought the singles or I don't care about it. Exactly. I'm so like, you know, what's more old trades? <laughs> that that will be the nice thing about Discovery is that they're going to force them to take an accounting of what's really working and uh... what's not. And I think they might stop the Batman oversaturation as well. You really can't oversaturate the market because people will get sick of it. Like, no. look at all the people turning on Marvel right now. <laughs> like, I was just like, y'all some Fairweather fans. Damn. I was about, it's too much. I was about, I'm not invested in another 10 years. I was about to say. Everybody I love's dead. <laughs> I was about to say, if we kill the trades, though, we're going to kill Barnes and Nobles. But, I mean, is, is uh, Manga keeping we don't, alive? We don't even make that. Yeah, they're, they're going to make their money on Manga. Cool. That's where everybody's really making their money. And, the, and like, it has exploded in the last, like, four years specifically in the American market. And, like, this is the secret nobody really talks about. It's really what's propping up the actual American comic book industry when you really look into it. So, oh it's quite it's quite interesting. Oh Barnes and Nobles will be okay. As long as they have Bernstein Bears and, you know, whatever James Patterson and Tom Clancy are putting out, they'll be fine. Yes. Comic books are, like, a very small percentage of their of their uh, profit. So, who bought, you know what? I don't care. Remember the last time I went to Barnes and Noble to get a comic book? Maybe a Funko Pop, but not a comic book. I can't remember the last time I bought it. Uh, yeah. I used to, though. I Well, like they've closed down a lot of Barnes and Nobles. It's, yeah. That's probably why. But it's just, like I said, any, any of the trades of the new stuff, I'm like, either have the stuff already or come on. Or I don't care about yeah, I'm like, Looking at you, White Knight. <laughs> reprint, reprint some more old stuff. Looking at you, metal. Dark metal. <laughs> Look at you, volumes of New Fifty Two and early Rebirth crap. Not, not gonna lie though, uh, Aquaman New Fifty. Like, yeah, honestly, the, the yeah. Aquaman stuff and the Green Arrow stuff. Like I said, it's been ten years since I bought but, a DC. But, <laughs> trade. Ag- but again, honestly, it's like anything from New Fifty Two you like, you probably already own. Yeah. And I'm thinking, anyone who hasn't read it yet, who's going to look for New Fifty Two stuff, especially since we've wiped away all that New Fifty Two mostly. And, like, the minute you Google something about New 52, it's trash! Avoid it! I mean, what what has survived from New 52 besides Court of Owls? Owie. Ooh. Yeah. Well, Batgirl being Batgirl again, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Although like, she, actually not being Oracle and stuff. Well, like. she, she's kind of splitting it 50-50 right now, so. Well, I mean, she's not in a wheelchair, so. Yeah, true. <laughs> yeah, that's about it. Okay, okay, I was gonna say, okay. Okay, anything not Bat-related, I'll wait. Ooh! Oh, ouch! Yeah, you're you're tough to find it. Because I was going to say the multiple lantern cores that was pre New Fifty Two. They started that, so that you can't yeah. even count that as New Fifty Two. And they canceled Batman Inc. so quick into it, they can't count that either. Yeah, and I mean Barry Allen came back before New Fifty Two just by the skin of his teeth, so you can't count that. <laughs> just by the skin of his teeth. I know, like a year or two. What was it like a year or two before? Yeah, I was like, damn, I was, I'm surprised they didn't just wait for New Fifty Two. Like a bat out of hell. Oh, yeah. I'm surprised they didn't just wait for New 52. No, it was time with the TV show in the works oh, and stuff. And yeah. Like I told you, originally the Green Lantern movie was going to be a Flash movie. So that's probably the, that was the impetus for it. So Yeah, and Jeff Jones, yeah. one of the old, all the old guys back. Speak, <laughs> speaking of Barry Allen, you want to talk uh, Justice League Incarnate 5? Yes, let's talk. Oh my God. Th- this book has, this book is actually good and I'm surprised by it every single week. I know that sounds terrible, but like the, the pitch for it, I just wasn't here for it. And then I started reading it and I was like, Oh no, this is actually really good. The marketing doesn't do it justice, honestly. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I didn't even mean to do that one. <laughs> yeah, I know. I know you're right. Cause I wasn't going to pick this up. And then when you suggest me read it, it's better like, than the okay. Justice League book. There I said it. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah. I was- you know, I- like joshua williamson and everything but like like if it was just if, like if it was just like oh that's what they were riding their coattails on or whatever I'm like nah. <laughs> you know uh, yeah no i mean yeah i don't think they really sold this book because yeah I, I like i said i wasn't gonna pick this up so you said something and then yeah no this especially this last issue yeah it's got a lot 
lot of balance between like action and actual actual character development and the, the plot is character driven and stuff like that that's just something we haven't seen in a justice league book in a while i'd say since since who brian no yeah maybe wait what yeah i'm trying to think um the last time i've seen really really good like character plot driven stuff in justice league it's been at least five years Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, it's just all punch em up cosmic adventures with no consequence. It might be a so, decade. I mean, have we, have we had anything good? I wouldn't say a decade. I wouldn't push it that hard, but I'd say at least half a decade. <laughs> okay. So around Rebirth, maybe? Yeah. Like, okay. I like the stuff they were doing right before Rebirth. That was pretty good. And then they just lost the, lost the plot. But this one is pretty steady. Eh? He definitely knows where he's going and kind of has to. But oh, yeah, yeah. And, and it's dark side, sure. But like, it's not annoying dark side. It's not whiny dark side. It's not Thanos light dark side. Like a lot of people like to write them now. So yeah, no, I mean, it's, yeah, it seems like there's an actual there's a plan. He, he for feels him. more threatening and menacing, like he should be. <laughs> and and the great darkness, it must be much more powerful because it seems to have <clears throat> put dark oh, God. side in chains. It's Jimmy Olsen, he's like, I should have been Leviathan. <laughs> <laughs> oh, he's the Betty Brand. Okay. Yes, sir. it was me. <laughs> Tony making Earth One Superman. Something I don't know though. We can't tarnish Superman anymore. Like <laughs> I know, Superman is taking a hit. Connor's talking trash about Superman and Lois. You know it's bad out there for a Superman. <laughs> I know, I know. But this is a solid book. I really do enjoy it. I think it's very well put together. Yeah, I mean, we, we get a glimpse of where Barry Bear, It did seem a little hurried, but this was the final issue. I don't think they were expecting this to be the final issue, but, you know. Well, I wonder if, if um they cut it short because, yes, this it even says on the last page, yeah, oh, yeah, continued indefinitely the, Ju- the Justice League, so. Exactly, like I said, they, they're, they're spinning that together pretty quick. Yeah. They're like, oh, crap, Se- we only have Snyder fans? Yeah, let's kill them. 70, <laughs> Just, Justice League 75, the 30th anniversary of Death of Superman. So rude. So rude. Superman's like, oh, I gotta do this again. It's like, get my black suit, Lois. Where's my black suit, Lois? Oh, please. Wonder Woman just came back from the dead like five minutes ago. Yeah, did anyone care? No. <gasps> oh, my. They did it. I don't know, man. I swear they're pandering to some of us. Cause, like, I saw like a new uh, art for like, oh, you know, with the Justice League dead, the rest of the heroes are gonna have to band together and like, who was like big on like the right side of this like big collage of heroes nightwing hal jordan i'm like oh my god they're pandering then every white guy on this podcast <laughs> when will it be my time to shine name a character damn you archie comics for being on hiatus damn you <laughs> you can jump on never get nothing not a decent wonder woman story that's not newbie related like i want diana to be great <laughs> Oh my god! <laughs> oh, remind I me want to, Hot Girl to be great. I want her to come back. Oh, remind me to ask you like a uh, Wonder Woman question when we're done. I don't want to say anything on the air yet. <laughs> Okie dokie. Okay, uh, but yeah, we get a glimpse of Barry stuck in suburbia. <laughs> Poor thing. It's not his bag, really. It's as much as we all thing. like to pretend it is. Exactly. But uh, oh, and I love at the beginning because at the end of the last issue, you know, Superman's like, oh, I couldn't say I couldn't save Batman. It's like, oh, come on. You know, you know he's gonna show. Up. You know they're redoing Flashpoint, and it's and he's Batman. Come on, plot armor. Come on. Exactly. It's like you think you're getting rid of him that easy? No way, buddy. It took us longer to get rid of the Batman who laughs. Come on. <laughs> Seriously? Seriously? <laughs> and he's still lurking. <laughs> to be honest. Oh, he's a creeper. Oh yeah, he's they're, they're just waiting. They're gonna, you're not gonna you're not gonna pry that out of their cold dead hands. <laughs> That's always on the back burner. <laughs> oh, you know, the, every day someone's wa- monitoring social media and they're just like, have, they, have the kids forgotten about him yet? Can we bring him back? No. <laughs> Is this the time? No. Give it 10 years. Give it 10 years. If they could do something like what they did with Barry, like, I don't think they can do that anymore. They just, they don't have the, the, the what, gumption. Wait, 25 years? Yeah. Oh, no. So... I can't wait for this discovery merger. Like, I just need to get it over with and see what it looks like afterwards. It's uh, gonna be a massacre, though, kids. Blood's in the street. Get ready. Oh my! Oh my god. Um, yeah, I read Ben. This is Justice League seventy three. The pen- his penultimate issue. Yeah, yeah. Look who's on the cover. 
I know. Even though that really doesn't happen until like the end there, but yes. Of course, bait and switch. Well, not bait and switch, but prolong it. At least, at least we got Dr. Fate, though. So, so yeah, still kids. For, for those of you not reading, Evil Entity takes over the other uh, uh, newcomer, Black Adam. I feel like this is racist. <laughs> is this I, racially motivated? <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm no, kidding. No, it's it, a joke. <laughs> it, it's monetarily motivated. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh my god! So the Justice League's just like, what do we do? What do, you know? It's Bendis. What do we do? What do we do? Well, it's not. Well, it didn't meander as bad as I thought it would. Yeah. Well, again, the art is pretty damn good, well, again, and I thought he might manage to find a Bendis type balance. Yeah. Well, again, too, he has to be done by next issue too, so you know he doesn't yeah. he doesn't get to spread out full Bendis either. Yeah, and the thing about this book that kind of has driven me crazy is how weird all the superheroes' relationships are. Like, I just like why are they a team? They're starting to feel like Avengers, meaning they feel like coworkers and not family. And that has just always been the definitive line of Justice League is that they feel like a family. It's so and not co-workers. <laughs> I, I'm assuming this story's been rushed because it seems like every issue, at least from at two different points, it seems like at one point there's certain heroes in the room, and then when you move to another room, a page or two later, at least one or two of those heroes are gone are missing. It, it, maybe they're maybe they're dying. Well, like well, like they're sitting around the meeting table upstairs, and it's like Wonder Woman's there, but when they go down stairs in the basement where the justice league dark hangs out it's like hippolyta's there and, and diana's not there it's like well, wait 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 what what yeah uh, that's what i'm saying i think they rushed it and then wasn't it like last issue or the issue before they had one of the supermen's like sitting there or something and then this one they're like oh yeah they're both off earth because yeah we don't need the mere magic <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> and i heard i heard a little we're still suffering from 5g just blame david and it'll be okay i just heard I, I still heard tiny bits of bendis when just like naomi's like wait superman's superman's vulnerable to magic once when has superman been vulnerable to magic no one tells me these things and you call yourself a super fan oh <laughs> the original that. super fans too no they didn't less. put that in the comics back home i know Oh my god! I Why mean, would they? Why would you broadcast that? I mean, at least I don't know if you watched this week's Naomi, but the plot moved along a little bit more. But like, what was that last week or the week before? I'm like, man, call me for the finale. I cannot be bothered. <laughs> was that last week or the week before? I'm like, they went camping. I'm like, really? How does it move the plot along? Is this is no, no one even attacked them. I don't think like Smallville. I'm like, Bro, come on. I haven't even heard anything on TikTok. You oh. know what's getting all the play on TikTok? It's Bel Air. Really. Like, I literally haven't seen one single review of Naomi. Like, not a peep. Not even the comic book. So, um, dear DC, you need to get your marketing together. I mean, how long How long is Naomi the TV show for the world? If they, uh... Yeah, if they can't even get, like, 20 people on TikTok to talk about it. Exactly. Ugh. I guess I'll do it. I don't know. Oh, hey, did you, uh, did you see, I guess, Naomi season two, the comic is coming? Like yeah. another six issue? And I'm just like, I don't really care about that with uh milestone coming back and making it big this year so starting in may like honestly i don't need naomi when i have the whole milestone universe and they're making it like the whole planet or earth m and everything sorry naomi <laughs> you're just not that interesting compared to freaking the milestone universe you're not yeah i might have to take a deep dive because i was i wasn't big in the milestone before so yeah i might have to it's more than static so <laughs> yeah yeah like, yeah no because i just remember like them doing the crossover with superman back in the 90s and stuff and yeah. I mean, knowing hardly anything about Milestone, it's, it seems more interesting than Naomi. <laughs> I, I, I hate to be that person. I wanted her to succeed, and I, I think she, uh, she think she might still have time and space, but I feel like the show is definitely a contractual obligation since everything fell through for Ava Dar- Darvigny, yeah. uh because of the whole New Gods movie and stuff like that. So this is just a contractual obligation as far as I'm concerned, and it feels like it. Every bit of painting... Like, the the show feels dated. Like, it feels like this is, like, a, a 2010s kind of show. We don't do TV like this anymore. Not even the CW does TV the way that Naomi does it now. It's just, She's being written like she has 23 episodes when she has maybe 10? I mean... 13 or whatever? It just seems like... Wait, so it's 13 episodes? I mean, I think... It's, so, not, it's definitely not 23 episodes. Oh, yeah, I know. I mean, well, I mean, this week was episode 6, so we're almost half... We're, like, about halfway already, and, like, what is, you know... What has really happened, exactly. It just seems like no sense of urgency in the st- show, the story, even the theme song. I'm just like, yeah, okay, I'm kind of bored, you know. 
Yeah. Can we jazz it up a little bit? Come on. Like I said, contractual obligation. <laughs> I guess. So, I mean, we looked at the ratings last time. If that was, if those ratings don't pick up, how how long is she, you know, she going to get a second season and, or is she going to get past I that? I don't even know if the CW is going to be around in two years. So uh, I don't, you know, true. that whole thing too. Yeah. Like she definitely, this show definitely came out at the wrong time on the wrong network. <laughs> That's probably the other problem. You know, probably if it would have been over. Where on Star Girl is sure to be moved to HBO Max if anything happens. Everything else is up in the air. Well, yeah, honestly, Star- that's probably what. Well, I mean, Star- Flash is like, peace out, homie. I see the writing on the wall. Exactly. I mean, Star Girl was, uh, you know, hey, twenty twenty four. She coming. has the best budget, even even above Superman. If you ask me, I think that her production values are way better than yeah. the Superman and Lois shows. So. Well, well Star Girl originally came from the DC app, so I mean, I could easily see that going going back. Yeah, like going HBO. back. Well, yeah. because they do, they do fund the money for them directly, specifically. That wow. and Superman and Lois, that's where their budget comes from. That's why it looks a little better than the other CW shows. Yeah. I mean, yeah, Superman and Lois, I like it. Uh, I can see Connor's problem with like, he's like, oh, there's like eight, eight subplots going I was like, oh, on. honey, let me introduce you to Smallville. Clearly, you're new here. Uh, <laughs> no, I think. I'm more, an OG. <laughs> I think there's more going on than an episode of Smallville. <laughs> Oh no, not seasons one through three. Oh no, honey. <laughs> I mean, there's a Superman story. There's a Lois story. Like oh, I know. Each, each of the kids. Go back and watch Smallville. You'll see it. Trust me. <laughs> oh my god! But I mean, I mean, the Bizarro stuff's interesting. But yeah, there's a whole lot going on. I mean, Lana and her family's got a whole thing going on. Uh, Need I remind you guys of the Doomsday story? <laughs> Doomsday. <laughs> Doomsday. Not even Superman yet. Just saying. I know. I know. Black suit, he didn't even die yet. I know. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> but enough ranting and raving, I guess, until next week. <laughs> Give yeah. the kids the homework. I was going to say real quick, I, I broke down. I bought War for Earth 3, number one. Oh, you did? Yeah. Okay. Um, I read it. It's, it's okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's basically a lot of setup. You know, Amanda Waller basically trying to work with the crime syndicate. I mean, she's she's a criminal. She'll fit right in. Was, and it's like, it was Robbie Thompson, which is why I was just like, oh, cool. And uh, and then it's Hopeless. <laughs> I hope that's a stage name. <laughs> and then the art by Steve Pugh. So <laughs> it had the Teen Titans and stuff in it. So it's just like, you know, where did gave it a the, chance. Where did it have the Teen Titans at? Well, it's supposed to anyway. Oh, it will. Yeah, yeah. Because Titans Academy's in it. Well, yeah, yeah, that's why I kind of picked it up because I think there's only like two it's like five issues and i think only two of them i don't pick up so there's like it's gonna cross over into the flash i pick that up regularly only anyway so yeah i figured i'm like i'll pick up one see what it's like but i mean do you think there's enough ambush bug in this story to recommend charlie i think even one panel is enough to recommend ah, true, to charlie because he'll hope for more and that's how they get you they that's sucker true. you in with the promise of more but yeah. i don't fall for it anymore see oh my god can you imagine <laughs> Get that ambush live action show. Four for three. All I mean, right. given how good Eagly looks, we could do an ambush bug story now. Oh my god, DC, come on, give it. Oh my god, give it to Charlie Esser. Let him write that. I mean, he will put the blood, sweat, and tears into that thing. Can you imagine? You're gonna need a David F. Walker to balance him out, like David balances Bendis out, Maz. <laughs> your mind. I was going to say, you and me. <laughs> oh, I want no parts of that ambush book. <laughs> Call me when you, uh, when you're talking about, uh, Batmite. Then we can talk. Oh. <laughs> maybe, maybe, they can, <clears throat> maybe they can fight. All right, kids. All right, so next week, uh, we're going to wrap up the Crisis on Earth Prime from Justice League of America 209. Woohoo! And then in two weeks, we'll, uh, we'll wrap up the Secret Origins arc on the, uh, animated Finally! series. Finally! <laughs> Hey. Hopefully you've been watching along and watching ahead and you're enjoying yourselves. That's one of the shows with the along with Batman the animated series that I highly recommend. Oh, yeah. will always recommend. Oh, they don't yeah. make them like that anymore. And then, like we said, the week after that, so in three weeks will be our April Fool special, so our April surprise. <laughs> oh kids. <laughs> what can I say, kids? It's gonna be exciting. <laughs> Sun's out, guns out, buns out, one of those. Hey <laughs> uh, all right, kids. So yes, yeah, so send your thoughts on all of that. Uh oh yeah, and the pretty like we remind you again, send in your questions. Uh in pretty soon we'll be talking to hopefully Mr. JMD Mateus about, yes! about all his Justice League stuff. So 
send your thoughts on uh, any questions for him, any of the upcoming issues, email us capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614-382-2737. That's 614-38CAPES. And remember, you can follow Unlimited Justice on Facebook, on Twitter. Uh, go join the Justice League, Justice Society fan group on Facebook. Uh, find links to all the various social medias for all the various DC and Marvel shows we do. Uh, go to the YouTube channel. Every episode gets a video. Uh, you might see a little fun some of them, others not so much. You know, she don't want to see. She doesn't want you to see. Glug glug. Uh, <laughs> and yes, and most importantly, if you can, please subscribe to the Patreon. Uh, once again. Uh, we're out here. No now. billionaires funding us. Not We're anymore. We're trying to get our own transmatter porter here. <laughs> that, that, that billionaire Rob Southgate let us go. We're on our own now, kids. So, Why did your eye drift over to my box? So if you can, yes, please subscribe to the Patreon. Every little bit helps, but 3 to $5 can see you the exclusive content, early access to creator interviews. Uh, once a month, Lilith and I talk to Mr. DG Chichester about one of his... Chichester cre- checks. Yay! One of his creations. Uh... So you get early access to that. I got the good mic out for you guys. And Patreon exclusive only on the Patreon. Super superhero movie brackets. We will find the worst superhero movie of all time. Uh, episode one was Howard the Duck versus the 1990 Captain America movie. Episode two was Fantastic Four from 2015 versus X Men Apocalypse. Fan four tastic, Philip. Fan four stick tastic. That's what Charlie called it. Fan four skin. <laughs> oh, let's get my jokes. And uh, coming probably at the end of March, Electra vs. Blade Trinity. So you do not want to miss that. So Will Phil stay awake? Find out! <laughs> okay, drunky McSmokey. Uh, <laughs> and while you're watching all that exclusive content, get yourself some Capes and Lunatics and Capes and Lunatics Sidekicks <laughs> merch. Find it all, all in one place. That's Linktree. Is that Russell? <laughs> Fan for Dumpster Fire. Probably. All right, so yes, find so yes, find everything at Linktree l a n k t r dot e e slash capes and lunatics. Lilith Hellfire, where can the kids find you? If you nerds want to uh, dweeb out with me about comic books and other pop culture stuff, find me on Twitter at Lilith Hellfire, on Instagram at Lilith Hellfire sixty nine, and of course on TikTok, making all the comments. Your post might be next at Lilith Hellfire sixty nine. Hello, Megan. <laughs> Somebody's muffins getting buttered. That ain't my business. Let me get a ride on your alligator back, bro. <laughs> Come on, get your head out of your butt, buddy. Okay, I'm sorry. You son of a Whoa! All right, kids, thank you for joining us again. In one week, we wrap up Crisis on Earth Prime, and then in two weeks, we wrap up the first arc of the animated series, and then in three weeks. You don't want to miss the two, the two gun the April. Annual four. April surprise. Talk, talking about talking about uh, missiles this time. Uh, wait till our April Fool special. It's big. It's bold. And that's just one of them. Get yourself some unlimited justice. Crisis not included. <laughs> maybe, maybe. Ayo.